Unit 10, Lesson 4, picks up uh, where we left off yesterday with writing equations of uh, exponential functions. But today we're going to be looking at graphs instead of uh, tables and the uh, word problems you saw yesterday. So after watching this video, you should be able to say that, yes, I can create an exponential function from a graph. And that's going to be our primary focus. Okay, but also um, in doing that, you're going to have to learn how to uh, identify key features of these graphs and these steps to actually writing these exponential functions. So this kind of goes uh, hand in hand with that first main topic. Okay, so example one, we're asked to determine what to determine if the following graphs are linear or exponential, and then create a function for them. Okay, so I have a and b up together. You can see both of them. Okay you could obviously see that there is a difference between A and B, okay? And as we've learned in the past, all right, for A, uh, we have a linear equation. We know it's a linear equation because we have a graph of a straight line. Linear equations have a constant rate of change, which means when I count the slope, it's going to be the same from the first point, A, to the second point, B, all right, and all the way up to C as well or any other point on this line. So I go up 2 over 1, that's my slope. Okay, and if you remember, um, slope intercept form would be y equals mx, m is the slope, plus b, which in this case is the y intercept, which is always the y intercept, in this case it's 3. Okay, so linear equations follow the form y equals mx plus b. <clears throat> All right, now looking at b then, obviously it's not a straight line because you see the curve here at the bottom. It may look straight at the beginning, but there is a curve. All right, so this is going to be exponential. All right, so we're going to fit it into the form y equals a times b to the x power. All right, now how we come up with these things, all right, uh, pretty much the same as yesterday. We're going to need to find points and make a table out of them. Remember, a is the initial value when x is 0. So that's also known as the y-intercept. So that's easy to find. So I have y equals 3 times some um, factor that we have to figure out to the x power. All right. Now, when I look at this, notice I start up high. And as I progress to the right, all right, I'm getting smaller. I'm going down. This shows decay. That means I should have a fraction in here. All right, or something in between 0 and 1. That's why we get decay. All right, so let's look at some points. I have this point right here, which is negative 1 and 9. I have that point right there, which is 0, 3. I have this point right here, which is 1, 1. All right, so as I look, I'm going from 9 down to 3. All right, I'm either subtracting 6 or I'm dividing by 3 all right and when I go from 3 to 1 it's clear that we're dividing by 3 not subtracting 6 now keep in mind we don't use division when we're dealing with exponential functions instead of dividing by 3 what we say is we are multiplying by 1 third all right so my equation is going to be y equals 3 times 1 third to the x power notice the parentheses all right uh, make sure you have those there. Okay, moving on. Take a look at C and D. All right. First of all, let's go ahead and determine what we have here. All right, whether it's linear or exponential. And obviously, you see the curve in both cases. So in both cases, we have an exponential function. All right. Which, once again, means we're going to say y equals a times b to the x. A is that initial starting value when x is 0. So when I look here, it may be hard to see, but that says 1 fourth. All right, so I know right from the start I have 1 fourth times some constant factor to the x power. Now, this is a growth equation because it's clearly going up from left to right. So I'm expecting a number. It could be a fraction or a decimal, but it's going to be bigger than 1. All right. Now, again, looking at your points, this is negative 1 and 1 eighth. It may be hard to see that. This is 0 and 1 fourth, and that's clearly 4 4. 
Okay, so again, how do I go from one eighth to one fourth? How do I go from one fourth all the way up to four? All right, well, it helps to start with numbers that are close to each other. So I have negative one and zero. All right, notice if I multiply four by two, I get eight. Okay, so what I think I'm doing here is I'm multiplying by two. All right, so if I multiply zero and one fourth, if I multiply that by two, one fourth times that would be a half. So this would give me one and a half. And if I multiply that, I would have two one. And if I multiply that by two, I would be over here at three two. And if I multiply that y value by two, I get four, and that checks out. So what I'm doing here is I am multiplying by two. And that's my common factor. Okay, so let's do this one more time. All right, again, we know this is exponential because of the curve. All right, we also know that it's a decay model because it's going down from left to right. All right, I know its beginning value is 1, which I don't necessarily have to write, but I'm going to put it in there for now. I'll simplify it when I'm done. All right, we just need to figure out the decay factor. Okay, and again, Identify points to do this. I go from negative 2, 4, down to negative 1, 2, down to 0, 1. And then I could estimate and guess that this is a half, but I don't really want to do that. I want to use the numbers I know. All right, so 4, and i got to get to 2, so I'm either subtracting 2 or dividing by 2. We've already mentioned that this is not linear, so it's subtractions out of the case. So it is division. We're dividing by 2. Again, instead of saying dividing by 2, what we're going to say is we're multiplying by half. And if I multiply by half again, I get there. And if I multiply by half again, I am right. That is the point 1, comma, a half. So our decay factor is a half. Okay? So again, in looking at what we did here, all right, it's building off of what we learned yesterday. It's probably a little bit easier because we already know the uh, beginning number, the A, all right, the initial value. All right, it's just identifying the points and creating it from there. All right, keep in mind linear equations produce straight lines. Exponentials will produce growths like what you see here, uh, curves like what you see there. All right, and uh, there are problems on the back again. These are you try problems. We'll do in class tomorrow. Please answer the questions there at the bottom. All right, and we'll see you in class tomorrow.